Hey, I'm Hunter from Scothrive, and in this video, I'll be creating the Holy Grail layout using CSS Grid. I'll be using CoPen to write the code, and most of the default settings should be fine. However, I do have a CSS reset enabled, which will reset all the default CSS for browsers. That way, we can ensure that we're all starting from the same point no matter which browser we're using. Now, let's go ahead and start on the HTML. The HTML is simple. We have a container that is wrapping a header, nav, main, aside, and footer HTML elements. Feel free to give these elements their own classes, but I'll keep things simple for the tutorial and just target the elements in our CSS. With that said, let's move to our CSS styles. The first thing we need to do is style the container and let CSS know we're planning on using CSS grid by setting display to grid. Next, we'll define the columns in our layout by setting the grid template columns property. The first column and the last columns will take 16 rem, which is where we'll place our nav and sidebar. The middle column will take the remaining space available. This behavior can be achieved using the one fractional unit. To learn more about fractional units, check out the link in the description. Next, we need to define the template rows using the grid template rows property. The first and last row, which is where our footer and header will be placed, will be set to auto. By setting the value to auto, the height of the row will adjust depending on the content inside. The middle column, which is where our nav, content, and sidebar will be placed, will take up the remaining space available using one fractional unit and expand to fit the content. The next property we'll set is the grid template area, which is one of my favorite features of CSS Grid. This property is great because it's a visual way to place items on a grid by defining the name of the area that should take up a particular cell in the grid. The name of the area can be anything you want, but you first must define the name for each element using the grid area property. For example, let's go ahead and define the grid area names for our header, nav, main, aside, and footer elements. Now that these elements are named, we can go back to our container styles and define which cells these elements should take up using the grid template area property. Remember that we created a grid with three columns and three rows. First, let's define what should take up the first row, which is our header element. The syntax for this property is unique, but straightforward. Start by writing open and close quotations, which represents our first row. Inside these quotes, we need to define what elements take up the three columns, which we can do by writing header three times. Now let's move to row two. The first column will be the nav, the second will be the content, and the third will be the sidebar. Now we can move to the third row, which will have the footer element take up each column. This is basically everything we need to create the layout we want but I'll add some padding and background color to the elements so they're easier to see. I'll also add a min height property on the container so it takes up the entire height of the page. This is useful when there's not enough content inside the layout to fill the page. If you liked the video this far, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when we release new tutorials like this one. Now let's make our layout responsive. First, write a media query that will set new styles when the width is below 1024 pixels. We only need one column for smaller screens, so we'll change grid template columns on the container class to one fractional unit. Next, we want each element to have its own row, and each row will have different sizing requirements. Therefore, we need to find five values on the grid template rows property. The first row is for the header and will be set to auto, which will adjust the height depending on the content inside the header. The second row is for the nav and it uses the minmax CSS function to set a minimum and maximum value. In this case, the minimum size is 5 rem and the maximum is auto, which will allow the container to take up as much space as it needs to fill the content inside. The third row is for our content and uses one fractional unit. Again, this value will be calculated by how much space remains on the page and will adjust depending on how much content is inside. The fourth row is for our sidebar and it has the same minmax function values as the nav element. The last row is for our footer and will be set to auto, which will adjust the height depending on the content inside the footer. Last, adjust the grid template area properties by setting each area name on its own row. Now when we resize the page, you'll see the areas stack on top of each other. Check out this video to learn how to create an image slider using only HTML and CSS and hit that like button and consider subscribing if you found this video helpful. Again, I'm Hunter from Skothrive, and I'll see you in the next one.